Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Cottage Montessori Virtual School. We're, it's our TV show. We're glad to see you guys. Um, let's start with our hello song. All right, are you ready? You can sing along. And make sure when you hear your name to do something. You could wave or give a thumbs up or say a silly word, whatever you want. Yay. All right, here we go. Hello, Isla. Hello, Carla. Hello, Charlotte. We're glad to have you here. Hello, Ella. Hello, Evie. Hello, Jack. We're glad to have you here. Hello, Kaito. Hello, Micah. Hello, Rafi. We're glad to have you here. Hello, Sophie. Hello, Karen. Hi. Hello, Monique. Hi. We're glad to have you here. Yay. Welcome, everybody. I'm going to turn it over to Karen. I just want to give everybody a big good morning and a virtual hug. Don't forget to give yourself a hug, too. And I wanted to remind us that we're still doing springtime class and that we are still growing our plants. I'm not going to show the seeds today. I'm going to give them a couple days to grow so it's more dramatic when you see them next time. I think Monique's um, lettuce is still growing. Would you like to see it? Sure. If it's more, if it's bigger? I think it's a little bit bigger. Ooh. Ooh. It looks more like lettuce to me every single day. Wow, it really does. It looks like a baby lettuce. You know what? I want to show you something since you... Uh, I wasn't going to show it, but I do want to show it now. Um, I feel like things change really quickly when we have sunny days. Um, so, oh, this is interesting. I started one. Karen started one too. You inspired me. We'll see what happens. I just cut off the bottom of my romaine lettuce. We'll see. Here's something else that is a real experiment. I just Ooh. put tops of two carrots in a pie plate with some water. That will be and so interesting if they start growing their green. I don't know if everybody's seen what carrots look like when they're coming out of the, gr out of the ground. They have really tall, green, sort of fluffy. Yeah, they're very feathery looking. Feathery, yeah. So that is it. I think we're ready for. Uh, oh, great. Okay. So I'm trying, I was trying to think of crafts that we could do together that would be easy to do with things that you have around the house. Cause you know, we don't have a chance really, we can't go shopping right now. So we really want to use things that we have at home. And because uh, uh, I think most people have um, construction paper at their house. Um, I'm going to do a construction paper craft that lets you make your very own placemat. Mm -hmm. Let's see if I hold that back yeah, further. Cool. So and I'm going to I, try to move the computer. If for some reason somebody doesn't have colored paper at home, you can just take printer paper or any kind of paper and color it with markers or crayons and then make your strips. Better. Oh, that's a very good point. You don't even have to have construction paper. Um, so I'm going to try to move the computer so that you can see what I'm working on. Let's see if I do okay with that. that over there. Oh. Yes. Okay. So for the first, so as you could see on the piece that I showed you, having two different colors really helps so that you can really see the shape that happens. I'm going to start with the base of mine is going to be yellow. What you want to do first is fold the paper in half, put the corners together on so that it gets small. We're folding it the short way. So then here's the fold and here's the opening. Then what I want to do is draw some lines with my ruler because we're going to cut this. So I'm going to make some lines on my paper to know where to cut. It looks like you're making them just about as wide as the ruler is. 
That's right. Yes, that's a good point. Now, here's the important thing. I'm, I'm drawing the line on, let's see if you can see a little better, um, on the folded part and stopping before we get to the open part because you're going to cut along the folded edge. You're not going to cut all the way across. That's the important part about this project. So I'm going to finish making my lines as quickly as I can. All right. And it doesn't have to be perfect. You don't have to have them totally line up. But it's giving you an idea of where to cut your lines. So you can see we're going to stop here. You don't want to cut it all the way to the end because then all your papers will fall out. So let me see if I can do this through the camera. This is a little tricky for me because I'm sort of looking. All right, I'm going to cut on this line. And then I'm going to stop. So you see, it doesn't go all the way through. I'm going to do the rest of these in my hand. Let me see if I turn one light off, if that makes it less glary. I think that's better. Mm, not much better. I'm going to cut these other lines. Um, while you're watching. It's a little harder for you to see, but I want to show you. We can't see the lines, but we know they're there. Okay, that's the important part. So I'm, as you'll see, I'm stopping before I get to the end of the paper. That's the most important part of this project. Okay, so we're cutting these. I've got two more to cut. Stop. And we're gonna do the weaving part. So the, the thing about weaving is that it's an over and under project. You're gonna do something over and then under. Now you can see this is sort of, when you open it, it has cuts in it, but not all the way through. All right, so then you're gonna lie that down flat and get your other color. Now you could draw lines to cut here if you want, or you're ask your parents to draw long lines. I'm just gonna cut regular. Now this time, I'm cutting this way. This, 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 this way. Monique, is it possible to fold your paper so that you could cut a couple at once? Oh, that's interesting. I'll cut a, that's a very good idea, Karen. And you can make them however wide you want. It really doesn't matter. I'm making them about, um as wide as maybe an inch you can ask your parents and then this one i'm going to open up and cut down the middle okay now as you can see this is all these little openings here for the first one i'm going to start by putting this on top of the yellow part and go underneath this first cut so that you see it kind of pops out there then i'm going to go underneath see it how it went let's see if i can yeah so you see how it went over this one now we're going to go under this one i like to just lift it up without tearing it it's a little tricky now you see it's over this part you lift up the next one and slide it through and now it's on top of this one. Then I'm gonna lift this last part out so it can go through that little slot and be done. Boom. That's the first one. Now, this one you started by putting it on top of this paper. To make it look like weaving up and down, you have to do the next one underneath. So I'm gonna start this under here instead of on top. And then it's gonna pop out and be on top of this one. Can you see that? Then I'm gonna go back underneath this one and on top of that one. And then underneath this one and on top of that one. Underneath, under, over. So it can be a little challenging. But it's a little challenging, but so once, beautiful. 
get the hang of it, I'm gonna do the next one. It'll really give you a sense of the pattern. So this one you start over and then you lift it up and slide it. You skip one, lift it up and slide it. Lift it up and slide it. Once you get into a rhythm, it's a little easier to do. And you can see how it's making a pattern where it's green, yellow, green, the next one's gonna be yellow. I'm gonna do one more for you to see how it makes that pattern when you start. This is the tricky one to remember is to start underneath. And then put it on top of the next one. Then I lift this one up and slide it over. And there it is on top of this next one. Yeah, you can look at the one right next to it to see if that one's under, this one's gonna go over. Yes, you want it to be the opposite of what it was next to it. You know what it kind of reminds me of, Monique, is lacing work that we had on the shelf where you go down and then you come up and you go down. That's exactly right. I hadn't thought of that. Good point, Karen. All right. So I'm going to do one last one. There's still room for one more, but I just wanted to, you can see that this time I'm going over and then under. So you get the idea that it's starting to make a pattern. Let's see, hang on. Huh. It's like a basket. It is like a basket, yeah. And in fact, I think that in the past, some people have woven Easter baskets. Yeah, we've made some Easter or spring baskets. If you were here uh, at my house for school, we would probably be making some Easter or spring baskets right now. Yeah. So what's neat about this is that you can also change the colors. They don't have to be the same. You can weave different colors in and you could make different ones for different members of your family. So everybody could have their own color. Like this could be my color and this could be um, Mary's color. And then when they get dirty, you can just throw it away and make a new one. And sometimes we've taken those um, like to Staples or somewhere, you know, when we're, when we can go out again to the, all the stores. And um, if you want to save it and cover it with plastic, then you just wipe it off like we wipe our placemats off here after lunch. Right. And some people might have like contact paper at their house and they could cover it up. Exactly. So that, that could work too. Um, but even if you don't, you can just make a new one, which is what's part of what's fun about it. And I like that you can do all different colors. So you just get to use whatever is your favorite that day. Like I have different favorite colors every day. And so this today I was really feeling like green and yellow is oops. Now what you might need to do is tape them on the back so they don't slip out like that just did. Mine slipped out a little bit. You can see it's like, ooh, what happened? If you put a little tape on the back, that won't happen. So that is the end of this project. I hope you have fun with it. Um, are you ready for some songs? All right, I'm going to move the computer and hope that um, you'll be able to see me and Karen will tell me if you can't really see me very well. Um, Let me get my list of songs so I don't forget anything that's really important. All right, I don't want to trip over my table. Okay. Are you ready to do this? Okay. Everybody do this, do this, do this. Everybody do this just like me. Everybody do this, do this, do this. Everybody do this just like me. Everybody do this, do this, do this. Everybody do this just like me. Everybody do this, do this, do this. Everybody do this just like me. Woo! That made me feel sort of like a bird for a minute. <laughs> All right. You sing a song and I'll sing a song and we'll sing a song together. You sing a song and I'll sing a song in rain or sunny weather. You clap hands and I'll clap hands and we'll clap hands together. You clap hands and I'll clap hands in rain or sunny weather. 
you stomp your feet and I'll stomp my feet and we'll stomp our feet together. You stomp your feet and I'll stomp my feet in rain or sunny weather. Is that the end of that one, Karen? I think so. I think so. <laughs> awesome. All sorts of things, you know, you whatever and all whatever. Oh, that's true. You can make up your own. So, and you can be teaching your parents too, because they may not know. Breakfast this one. And I'll eat my breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> you brush your teeth, then I'll brush my teeth. <laughs> all right, let's do my favorite one. I think this may be my favorite one in all of school, except for um, one of my other favorite ones is. Uh, well, well, I'll think about that. Right now we're gonna do my favorite one of the day. There was a tree in the middle of the ground and the green grass grew all around, all around and the green grass grew all around and on that tree there was a branch, was the strongest little branch that you ever did see. Oh, the branch on the tree and the tree in the ground and the green grass grew all around, all around, and the green grass grew all around. And on that branch, there was a nest. It was the softest little nest that you ever did see. Oh, the nest on the branch, and the branch on the tree, and the tree in the ground. And the green grass grew all around, all around, and the green grass grew all around. And in that nest, there was an egg. It was the smoothest little egg that you ever did see. Oh, the egg in the nest and the nest on the branch and the branch on the tree and the tree in the ground. And the green grass grew all around, all around, and the green grass grew all around. And in that egg, there was a bird. It was the sweetest little bird that you ever did see. Oh, the bird in the egg and the egg in the nest and the nest on the branch and the branch on the tree and the tree in the ground. And the green grass grew all around, all around, and the green grass grew all around. I love that song too. This, oh, this is an echo song. So Karen's gonna echo with me and then you can either sing with me or sing with Karen. All right. This morning in my garden. This morning in my garden. I saw a lovely thing. I saw a lovely thing. It was a cheery robin. It was a cheery robin. And now I know it's spring. And now I know it's spring. This morning in my garden. This morning in my garden. I saw a lovely thing. I saw a lovely thing. It was a pretty crocus. It was a pretty crocus. And now I know it's spring. And now I know it's spring. <gasps> this morning in my garden. This morning in my garden. I saw a silly thing. I saw a silly thing. It was a wiggly worm. It was a wiggly worm. And now I know it's spring. And now I know it's spring. <laughs> <clears throat> I love the wiggly worm and it makes me think of when we were um when we were uh digging up the garden a few weeks ago at school when we were together and somebody found a worm i can't remember who it was maybe i remember and we got to look at it and i actually picked it up and i showed everybody and oh it was really neat and we have to be very gentle with our worms because they're doing really important work making holes in the ground so that our plants can breathe air better if the ground is really pushed down hard it's hard for the plants to grow and it's hard for their roots to dig down and take up nutrients so that's one of the jobs that worms do which is so great thank you worms thank you worms we love you all right here's another echo song for us i see robins i see robins birds nest too birds nest too butterflies too Butterflies too, flowers too, flowers too. Everything is growing, everything is growing. The wind is gently blowing, the wind is gently blowing. Spring is here, spring is here. 
Yay. Um, let's do our spring song. I mean, our spring uh, poem. Oh, spring, oh, spring, you beautiful thing. Oh, spring, oh, spring, oh, spring. Oh, spring, oh, spring. When the birdies sing. Uh oh, I feel like a king. Oh, spring. <laughs> so a hit. Oh, my goodness. So let's see. How are we doing time-wise? I'm gonna tell a story and if we have time for a dance party afterwards, we will. But right now, I really want to get a chance to read to you from our book. I hope you'll be able to see it. Mike Mulligan and his steam shovel. There it is. Yes, I checked this book out of the library, so I have it for a few more days and I just thought, let's read it one more time. I know we read it a little while ago, but it's nice to read the same books over and over. They make me feel sort of um, like, oh, this is my friend Mike Mulligan. All right. Mike Mulligan had a steam shovel, a beautiful red steam shovel. Her name was Mary Ann. Mike Mulligan and Mary Ann had been digging together for years and years. It was Mike Mulligan and Mary Ann and some others who dug the great canals for the big boats to sail through. It was Mike Mulligan and Mary Ann and some others who lowered the hills and straightened the curves to make the long highways for the automobiles. Let's see. And it was Mike Mulligan and Marianne and some others who dug deep holes in the tall, for the tall skyscrapers um, in the big cities. When people used to stop and watch them, Mike Mulligan and Marianne used to dig faster and faster and a little, um, oops, now I can't see. I see what you're talking about, Karen. Uh, and a little bit uh, harder. Then along came the new gasoline shovels and the new electric shovels and the new diesel motors. Um, these are modal sh motor shovels and took all the jobs away from the steam shovels. Mike Mulligan and Marianne were very sad. All the other steam shovels were being sold for junk, but Mike loved Marianne. He couldn't do that to her. And one day, Mike read in a newspaper that the people of Popperville were going to build a new town hall. We are going to dig the cellar of that town hall, said Mike to Marianne, and off they started. They left the canals and the highways and the big cities where no one wanted them anymore and went out into the country. They crawled along slowly till they came to the little town of Popperville. There's Popperville. Looks very different than the big cities. Oops, sorry friends. When they got there, Mike Mulligan spoke to Henry B. Swap, one of the selectmen. I heard, he said, that you're gonna build a new town hall and Marianne and I will dig that cellar for you in just one day. What, said Henry B. Swap? It would take a hundred men at least a week. Sure, said Mike, but Mary Ann can dig as much in a day as a hundred men can dig in a week, though he wasn't quite sure that this was true. They started in early the next morning. Soon, a little boy came along. Do you think you will finish by sundown? He said to Mike Mulligan. Sure, said Mike, if you stay and watch us. We always work faster and better when somebody is watching us. They go. Then Mrs. McGillicuddy, Henry B. Swap, and the town constable came over to see what was happening and they stayed to watch. Mike Mulligan and Mary Ann dug a little faster and a little better. This gave the little boy a good idea. He ran off and told all his friends in town and they stopped and stayed to watch. 
that made Mike Mulligan and Marianne dig a little faster and a little better. Here come all the people to go watch them. Boy, are they working hard. I think we're missing clang, clang. Gave the little boy a good idea. What, Karen? I think we're missing that gave the little boy a good idea. Did we? Oh, yeah, no, that happened a few pages ago. Clang, 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 the fire department arrived. They had seen the smoke and thought there was a fire. When the little boy said, why don't you stay and watch? When they heard the fire engine, the children in the school across the street couldn't keep their eyes on their lessons. The teacher called a long recess and the whole school came out to watch. The more people watch, the faster they work. Now the girl who answers the telephone called up the next town and told them what was happening in Popperville. All the people came over to see if Mike Mulligan and his steam shovel could dig the cellar in just one day. The more people came, the faster Mike Mulligan and Marianne dug. Oh my gosh, look at all that smoke coming out. Never had Mike Mulligan and Marianne had so many people watch them. Never had they dug so fast or so well, and never had the sun seemed to go down so fast. Dirt was flying everywhere, and the smoke and the steam were so thick that people could hardly see anything but listen. Bang, bang, crash, slam, louder and louder and faster and faster. Whew. And suddenly, it was quiet. Slowly, the dirt settled down. The smoke and steam cleared away, and there was the cellar all finished, just as the sun was going down behind the hill. Hooray, shouted the people. Hooray for Mike Mulligan and his steam shovel. They have dug the cellar in just one day. Suddenly, the little boy said, how are they going to get out? Mike Mulligan looked around at the four square walls and the four square corners, and he said, ah, we've dug so fast and we've dug so well that we've quite forgotten to leave a way out. Nothing like this had ever happened before in Popperville. Everybody started talking at once, and everybody had a different idea, and everybody thought that his idea was the best. Now, the little boy had another good idea. Why couldn't we leave Marianne in the cellar and build the new town hall around her? Let her be the furnace for the new town hall, and let Mike Mulligan be the janitor. Why not, said all the people. So they found a ladder and climbed down into the cellar to ask Mike Mulligan and Mary Ann. Why not, said Mike Mulligan. So it was decided and everyone was happy. They built the new town hall right over Mike Mulligan and Mary Ann. It was finished before winter. And now, when you go to Popperville, be sure to go down in the cellar of the new town hall. There they'll be, Mike Mulligan and Mary Ann, Mike in his rocking chair and Mary Ann beside him, warming up the meetings in the new town hall. The end. What a great story. I love that story. So I don't know, Karen, do we have time for a, for a freeze dance? We don't, not today, but um, we do it a lot, so we'll do it again next time. Great. Well, it was so great to see everybody. I hope you have a good day. We'll Thanks see you for today. joining us. <laughs> Bye. Bye. On the stopper. <laughs>